Hello, I'm Liam, and we are playing Four Against Darkness. We have been exploring the Palace of Nightmares. We defeated our quarry uh, in the last episode, a devouring protoplasm, down here in room six. And um, we obtained the relic that our patron was after, the throwing knife of flight. And now we're exploring, looking for more treasure to help pay off our debt. To the Divigna Marcias, we met some. Uh, what did we find? Some. We got attacked by some goat men. We found. We took out some gnolls here in room seven, <clears throat> and ran into another large troll up here in uh, in room eight. And now this empty room is where we left off. So let's see if this door to the west is locked. It is not. So we'll head in there. 22 is what the tile is going to look like, which looks like this. Just a square room with a couple of doors. I think I think for this episode we'll do maybe, we'll go to 12 here. So this will be 10, and we'll do two more rooms or corridors, and then we'll make our way back out. We need to get that knife to, uh, to the Divigna Marcias to complete that quest, and... I don't want to get overconfident here and lose lose somebody. We're doing pretty well right now. Throck is feeling it a little bit. Um, but we've got plenty of healing potions. And we've got Cleric with some healing spells. So let's, uh, let's draw this room. Enter like this. It's a three by three room. We will tidy this up when we... Transfer it to our journal. It's got a couple of doors. Where are the doors? On the south and west side. <clears throat> okay. This is room 10. And what, pray tell, is within the room? Seven. We've got minions. So we'll go to the Fiendish... Foes table roll. <clears throat> we got a two cockatrices. Okay, D three plus four. So that's going to be one plus four five cockatrices. Um, I didn't mark that these were minions. These are minions. I'm adding vermins in addition to minions. Keeping track, if we get to 10, we get uh, an XP roll. That's a fiendish foes rule. In the base roll, in the base rules, you just keep track of minions, but you're in fiendish foes, vermin count as well towards that XP roll. So what did I say? We have five cockatrices, cockatrice, cockatrice. They're like really mean chickens. Level five. Normal treasure, every time a character is wounded by a cockatrice, they must save versus level 2 petrification or be turned to stone. Bless can reverse the effects. Uh, this, this is, okay. We don't like being turned to stone. <laughs> uh, remember what I said about being overconfident? One, two, three, four, five. There's five of them. All right. Um, their reaction is fight to the death, so we're in this. <clears throat> there's there's no backing out now. Well, I mean, we could withdraw to get a free attack, which we don't want to do. We're just going to try to take these guys out fast. Well, we should be able to do it. Level 5. Throck is going to attack with his masterwork, two-handed hammer. It's a 3, plus 4 is 7. So he takes out one of the cockatrices. Jim, our warrior, with his two-handed sword, rolls with advantage. He gets a two, plus four is six. That takes out another cockatrice. Um, Elric, we'll have Elric go. What is, because we have sleep spells, so we'll wait to see what happens, and we'll see if, uh, if Blesk, what Blesk wants to do. She has a little more, a few more tricks up her sleeve than the others. So Elric, Elric misses. All right. So we've got Blesk and we've got three cockatrices here. Um, the good thing is that at least if they attack, they won't petrify everybody. <laughs> um, 
We really hope uh, Elric doesn't get petrified. Elric's our cleric. As long as he doesn't get petrified, he can bless the others and, and uh, unpetrify them. So I think we'll just, uh, I think we'll take our chances. We'll just, uh, oh, she's got plenty of spells left. Okay, I got to look up spells again. And um, we just, every time I do this, I have to find spells again. 49, page 49. <clears throat> I should make a little cheat sheet for myself. So we've got a lightning bolt. The spell works like an attack roll against a group of minions. They kill just one. We've, and we've got sleep. That's our other option. Well, an escape. <laughs> she could just run away. Um, but sleep. The spell works like an attack roll. It does not affect undead dragons and certain other monsters. Add the level to the roll. Defeat one box boss or D6 plus, L, plus level minions. Crikey. So she could put all these to sleep. Let's do it. Um, we've got sleep. We've got two. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. She's got two, um, two charges left on that wand to sleep. So she's got a hit. She's got a beat level. Five. Two. Plus her level is four, so she does hit. And how many does she put to sleep? One plus her level, all of them. They're all asleep. They dispatch them. Easy peasy. So, I just did not want to risk being petrified. That is a bad situation. That could, that could ruin your whole day. Um... <laughs> and more uh, okay there's Blesk alrighty back to fiendish foes to see what happens to your little normal treasure so we roll on the treasure table three choose either random scroll let's try for another uh, silvered weapon why don't we on a, we get a two and six two and six chance that uh, the weapon is silvered and it is not. So we just got some rudimentary weapon. Um, uh, do you, uh, weapon, non what weapon, non non magical weapon of your choice. I don't know. A one or two, it's a dagger. Three or four, it's a sword. It's a dagger. It's not a dagger. I don't think those are worth much, but it was worth the chance. I think to go for a silvered weapon. Um, in case we ever run into wraiths, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, be prepared. That's my motto. Okay, let's go, let's, let's see if the south door is locked. It is, with the sturdiness of six. Um, I'll mark that down. Let's see if the west door is locked. It is not, so let's head west. So we don't risk um, attracting wandering monsters. And uh, 46 is going to look like this. I just realized I didn't show you guys the fiendish photos tables for the cockatrices and whatnot. Oh well. 46. We got another hallway and a room. <clears throat> Short hallway. And another room. Right? It's got a door on the end, but um, that'll take us off the map. So let's, and in fact, uh, since we're going to wrap up here, let's, um, we just leave the door off there. And uh, see what's here in room. 11. So let me show you these tables again. Or we'll go back to contents table. We've got more minions. Okay. Minions in room 11. Back up to our fiendish foes minion table. Here's the cockatrices we just fought. And there's their um, blurb about petrification. So 
Let's see if we, what we get this time. One, Orc Looters, D6 plus six, that's a lot. Eight Orc Looters, <clears throat> eight Orc Looters. Uh, level five, three treasure rolls, minus one on the treasure roll. Orcs are afraid of magic and must test morale each time one or more is killed by a spell. If a spell caused by their if a spell caused their number to drop below 50%, they will test morale at minus one. Okay, nothing else. So uh, eight of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, eight uh, there's this tiny chance that we could get out of here just bribing them, but let's, uh, we're just going to attack. We're over here in room 11. Orc looters. Okay, Throck. Here we go, Throck. Five. With his masterwork two-handed hammer, that explodes. So five, again. <laughs> Ten. Oops. Six. Teen. Uh, Nineteen. Plus four is 23, <laughs> so he takes out four orc looters with one mighty swing of his uh, two-handed hammer. And um, he hasn't used his rage yet. I keep forgetting about uh, the barbarian rage ability. I think basically they roll three dice on an attack and take the best. Um, so... Okay, four, so we roll for morale now. Uh, yeah, and they run away. <laughs> they just, uh, yeah, they're out of there. They don't want none of that. So, uh, fled. What do we got? <clears throat> Orc looters, three treasure rolls at minus one on the rolls. So, two is 2d6 times 5 gold pieces. That's 9 times 5 is 45 gold pieces. Next treasure is a 3. Oh, another scroll or silvered weapon. <clears throat> All right, so let's try for a silvered weapon. We would get another silvered weapon. What's this going to be? I feel like giving it to Blusk. I don't know why. That's what we're going to do. Silvered sword. Blesk. Um, characters in Four Against Darkness can carry three weapons. So that's a second weapon for Elric and uh, Blesk. It does take a turn to switch your weapons, I think. So they're just going to keep their normal weapons. Uh, I don't know. I'll read more about those silvered weapons. Maybe we'll switch and use those permanently, or maybe they'll maybe they'll carry both. One more treasure roll. Six minus one is five. One item. One one item of jewelry worth two d six. That's six times twenty gold pieces. What did I say? Six times twenty is a hundred and twenty. Jewelry. And that's it for the Orc Looters. Okay, we're going to head back out to room 10. We need to roll to see if there's a wandering monster, and there is not. Um, how are we doing on time? We're okay. Let's try this one, one last room here. This, is, this door has a sturdiness of 6. So Throck needs to roll 6. Uh, he gets to add his level. So as long as it rolls a 2, he'll get it. He'll bash the door. Uh, oh, no, his level is 3. And Jim's level is 3. So he needs to roll a 3 or better to bash the door. Open. I'm really bouncing the dice today. That was a 3. So 3 plus 3 is 6. He bashes the door open. And on the other side, tile looks like this. Uh, I'll just make it a, since this is our last room, we'll just make it a, comes down one and over three. So three by three room here. Like that. 
Okay. And this is room 12. There is another door down here. We'll see how we're doing on time when we get there. So let's roll for content. It's a seven, so we have more minions. Okay, 12. That's our sixth. This does carry over from adventure to adventure, I believe, so I'll have to remember that. But what uh, what are we facing here? Minions. Roll six. Three. Possessed. <laughs> Possessed. Oh, dear. Possessed dwarves, and they're undead. Um, okay, so... D6 plus 3, 2 plus 2, so we got 5 possessed. <laughs> I don't know why that's making me giggle. Possessed dwarves, possessed undead dwarves. Um, these scythe wielding demon possessed dwarves are hard to kill. If killed, roll a D6. On a 3 or more, the dwarf will attack again. This next turn after this, it stays dead. There's a chance we could bribe him. Okay, undead. These scythe wielding, demon possessed dwarves are hard to kill. Okay. Um. Yeah, we're just gonna attack five. There's five of them. One, two, three, four, five. <coughs> Throck. Should we? Should we rage? Throck is going to rage. Why not? Is a, <laughs> all fives. So five, and that explodes. Okay, five, and explodes again. Ten, thirteen, plus his attack is four, seventeen. These were, what level were these guys? Five, level five. So, not quite. He takes out two, right? What did I roll, thirteen? Did I roll a seventeen or a thirteen? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, so many numbers. So much to keep in your mind. Um, we'll say he took out two. I think he might have taken out three. But let's give everybody else a chance to have some fun. Jim rolls with advantage. <laughs> this is both. Oh, this may be a devastating decision. Can I call for a replay? Uh, Blesk. Well, we'll have Blesk go last. <laughs> okay. are, are undead immune to sleep? It doesn't say they are. Um, oh, and I have to remember that they get to attack anyway. Possibly. Okay, two are down. Jim is gone. Throck is gone. Elric. He get he adds his level. He, he uh, two, because they're undead. So three plus four is seven. Um, that takes out, so he takes out one. It doesn't say, so I think we do a morale roll. And they flee. So these remaining two flee, but um, right? Doesn't say anything about them not doing. I feel like undead possessed dwarves wouldn't necessarily get afraid, um, but it doesn't say they don't. So uh, maybe they have enough uh, faculties about them still to recognize when they're in trouble. So two of them flee, but three of them are still going to... Let's see, there's a... On a three or more, the dwarf will attack. So how many of these dead three attack anyway? One of them. One of them is still going to attack. And who's it going to attack? Four. That would be Jim. So Jim needs to roll five or better. Four plus his defense. He defends. Not a problem. And... uh that's it for the possessed dwarves. Normal treasure. No, oops, where's the treasure? There it is. <clears throat> Four. One gem worth 2d6 times 10. So that's 60 gold. Sorry, 60 gold pieces. Gem. Okay. That's it for room 12 here. Now, we want to backtrack to the entrance. Um, so we just need to worry about wandering monsters. We can also, uh, let's do this. There are rules in, is it in Fiendish Foes? I believe it is. Resting. 
Once per adventure, the party may rest in a room that has been cleared of monsters, and the adjacent rooms or corridors must also have been explored and cleared. So we can rest in this room right here. In order to do so, uh, we must have doors with, that can be nailed shut. It takes one bag of nails for each door. Uh, before we left, I bought three bags of nails, so we're going to use... We're going to use one here and nail the door shut. Um, blah, blah, blah. When resting, each character can recover one life point and one spent wizard spell or cleric power. The only spells Blesk has used were from the wand or the scroll, so she doesn't get those back. But we get one life point back. However, you must make one wandering monster roll when resting. So I think we I think we get the benefit, but we also get the chance of um, encountering a wandering monster. So I'm going to go ahead and restore one health point to everybody who's wounded. We spent one bag of nails to do so, and now we roll and no wandering monster. If you have nailed the door shut and you do get a wandering monster, they try to open it and it alerts the party. Normally wandering monsters get to attack first, but if you've nailed the door shut, you're warned and, and you get to attack. So that's cool. So we're rested up. So let's head now, we'll remove the nails. Uh, head to room 10 and there's no wandering monster. Head to room nine, no wandering monsters. Eight, good. Seven, okay, four, okay, and we'll head to three. How are we on time? 21, let's do it. Let's open this door and see what's in this last room. Um, that was my roll to see if Throck could bash it open. I have a sturdiness written here of five. That door was locked, but now it is bashed open, and behind it is 35. 35. Yep, it's a room with no doors that kind of bends to the left here. So we'll just make that happen. Up two, over one, up two again, and over, down, and over. We'll just make it look like that. This is room 13. Lucky room 13. What do we find? Three. Trap. Okay. Fiendish. I forget. Does Fiendish Foes have a traps table? Boss, monsters, treasure, treasure. Nope. Go to the core rules. Traps. Traps. Traps table. Five spears. I think we had spears earlier, or maybe, maybe that was the last dungeon. Spears coming out from a wall attack two random characters. So, spear trap sprung. Mm, it's gonna hit or try to. It's gonna who's in danger? Three that's Blesk and four. Jim. Blesk and Jim. I'm going to find the traps. Traps, traps, traps. Where? Here we go. Page 62. 62. Traps. Spears. Just want to read about this. Activated by the first character walking past them and attack. Two random members of the party. A character failing the defense roll loses one life. It's a level five trap, so we just have to hit five or better. <clears throat> that was Blesk. Blesk makes it, and Jim fails it. So Jim takes point of damage from the spear trap. I believe... Let's go to our contents table <clears throat> chart. I think we can still... Yeah, if survive, roll d6 on the treasure table. So, um, fiendish foes, treasure, 
let's, uh, I feel like if we faced a normal thing, we should get a normal treasure. Fiendish foes, if that calls for treasure, we'll, we'll roll that one. But this is a normal trap. So, three, a scroll with a random spell. Here's our random spell table. Four, sleep. Excellent. We like sleep scrolls. So, I'm going to indicate that. This, we used the one sleep scroll, but now we've got another. That. Where's my marker? Okay. Not too shabby. All right. Oops. Sorry, Elric. Okay. That was the last room. We just need to make it out of here now. Um, go back to our contents table. Just in case, we'll hide this. When we get out of here, we are here in 13. So, we just need to check for wandering monsters on our way out. We'll move to corridor 3. No wandering monster. And the entrance. No wandering monster. And we escape the Palace of Nightmares with a fair amount of loot. I'll add this all up. Um, I, don't, I don't think I'm forgetting anything right now. Uh, I'll look into these silvered weapons and some other some of the other things we came across that we haven't seen before. And uh, we'll report back to the Divigna Marcias, turn in our throwing knife of flight. Uh, and uh, that's all for this episode. We'll play again soon. Until then, friends, keep your lanterns lit and your hearts warm. Thanks for watching.